Hello, this is Cecilia with Kentucky Rose Devotionals, where we're finding the roses in the Word of God. And I hope that you're having a wonderful Friday. Today is probably one of the most beautiful uh, doors to me in its description, because I, I love poetry. And I love um, the description here that, that God gives us of this door, which is the sheep door. And I relate highly to this one because as a child uh, growing up, I grew up on a farm. And on this farm, we had sheep. And so um, I know very well what it was like to see my dad be a shepherd over the sheep. And I would help him um, in their care and the feeding of them. And I, I, I love sheep. I love to watch them. I love to um, see their behaviors and how they react to situations. And the sheep is very, very much like um, people are um, the character of people um, uh, the sheep uh, know the voice of their shepherd um, they only come to that voice that one voice that feeds them they know it and they will respond to that voice I can remember my dad um, shaking uh, the feed bucket uh, on our farm growing up and I can remember the sheep when they would he would call out to them say come on sheep and when he would call to them they immediately would respond and come to his voice if anybody else went out there to call for them they weren't going to move um, and so that's one of the things that Jesus was relating here I believe in John um, chapter 10 talking about that he is the door of the sheep and talking about the importance of the sheep door that the sheep know his voice and that is so important in a day and age that we're in right now where there are so many voices so many things that are trying to pull you this way and that way um, to pull you in the wrong direction to make you go through the wrong door instead of going through the sheep door the door that that Jesus has provided for you you. He is the door and he is the sheep door because he is the good shepherd and so um, as we look at this sheep door today just just think of this beautiful picture that God is creating um, with this to, to, to view himself and he is the good shepherd and to see us as the sheep and if you know anything about sheep you know the 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 times of Bible times you know that the sheep were brought into either a pen um, or they were brought into a cave depending on where the shepherd was taking the sheep um, and the mouth of that cave or the opening of that that gate where the sheep were being kept in that pen um, was called the sheep door um, and the shepherd would lay in that doorway so that if anything happened during the night um, if he accidentally went to sleep or wherever the case may be that the predator was going to have to go through him over him to get to his sheep um, he was going to have to go through him and you know this is this is the perfect picture of who Jesus is to us you know that he is our shepherd and that he is laying in the gate he laid down his life for you and for me to take our place to take the place of our sin um, so that we can have the freedom and the liberty that we that we receive every day through our relationship with Jesus Christ that he lays in the way to protect us from the enemy he doesn't want the enemy to get to us so he he becomes that door to protect us he becomes the door of opportunity for us to walk in he becomes the door of life to us because he is eternal life and so there are so many wonderful beautiful things in this door that we're talking about today the sheep door so let's look at John chapter 10 I'm going to start with verse 1 um, the verse that I was telling you about of course is um, verse 11 which says I am the good shepherd the good shepherd lies down his life or lays down his life for the sheep and there are so many profound things in this scripture in John chapter 10 about this this shepherd who is our door the sheep door so let's look at this it says most assuredly and I'm reading from the New King James Version today most assuredly I say to you he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way uh, the same as a thief or a robber so Jesus is telling us there's only one way in there's only one way out we have to find our way through Jesus Christ. If you try to find your way to heaven any other way, you're going to be disappointed. You're not going to make it there because Jesus says, I'm the only way. If you try to come another way, you're a thief or a robber. He says, but he who enters by the door, there's that door, is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hears his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. The shepherd knows every single sheep. 
My dad always knew if there was a sheep that was uh, uh, missing. He would know that because he was their shepherd. He knew them better than, than anybody else. And that's, that's what Jesus knows. He knows you better than anyone else. He knows your heart. He knows the things that you desire from him. He knows what you need. Um, and he knows where you belong today. And so if we go after him, if we listen for him by knowing his word, by knowing the Holy Spirit speaking to us through his word, then we're going to follow after him. We're going to know his voice and we're not going to follow after other false shepherds or be deceived by the enemy of our soul. But instead, we're going to know his voice. He says, yet at verse 5, they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. And Jesus, it says, used this illustration, but they did not understand which he spoke to them. They did not understand that to, to be a sheep of God, you've got to come through Jesus Christ, the good shepherd. So he went on and he told them at verse 7, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door. I'm the only way in. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. So when we come to Jesus, we receive salvation through him. And he tells us some very important things here. He says if you, if you enter by him, you're going to be saved. And look what else is promised to you as you enter into Christ and come to him today with everything. He says you will go in and you will go out and you will be able to find pasture you will be able to find that hunger that you're hungry for you'll be satisfied there's only one today that can satisfy you that can give you the pasture the good green pasture that you need and that is Jesus today he's if you try to satisfy yourself with anyone anything else you're going to be disappointed because people will fail you things will fail you jobs will fail you but Jesus never will. He will never fail you because you will be able to go. You will be safe in him. And when you go out, he will go with you. He will protect you. He will keep you. And you will find pasture and peace and rest in him. It only comes through him. You know, what a beautiful picture that is to think about. To think about uh, just to visualize a beautiful green pasture. To visualize the, the beautiful white sheep and that shepherd, which is Jesus, laying in that gate to protect us from the enemy. Laying in that gate to protect us from, from sickness, disease, whatever the case may be. Jesus is standing as that intercessor between you and God. And, and he's there and he's laying his life down. He did it completely and totally. There's no part that he left out. And he does tell us what the enemy comes to do. Those that try to pull you away from the good shepherd are doing nothing at verse 10 but stealing, killing, and destroying. If you see stealing, if you see killing, if you see destroying, those are works of Satan. But he tells us what he's come to do. But I have come to give you life that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus wants you to live today. He wants you to have life. He wants you to have pasture, green pasture. He wants to lead you, as Psalm 23 says, beside the still waters. He wants to restore your soul today. That's what the Good Shepherd wants to do. Verse 11, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd gives his life for the sheep. You're not going to find too many people in this life that are willing to lay down their life for you, but Jesus did. He did that for you. He says, I, not as a hireling. You know, somebody who's just hired to do a job isn't going to care as much about the, the job as the person that really owns those sheep. Jesus, we belong to him. We're his sheep. You know, someone who, who doesn't know us, doesn't really know our heart, doesn't know who we are, is not going to care as much for our soul as Jesus does. Some people are wolves. He tells us in sheep's clothing. And that sheep, that wolf is going to flee. And he's going to try to catch the sheep, the, the sheep and scatter them is what Jesus says here. He says the hireling flees because he's a hireling and he doesn't care about the sheep. You know, there are some people who are in shepherd positions that don't care about their sheep because they're letting in and everything in their pulpit. And they're not protecting their sheep. They're not protecting them and, and doing the things that a good shepherd 
does for their for their sheep. A good shepherd, a good pastor is going to be there for his people. Um, he's going to see to their needs. He's going to see not just to the needs of the, the sheep right there, but he's also going to see to the needs of the family of the sheep. <laughs> um, he's going to be there for that family no matter what, what is going on, whether it's to visit in the hospital, whether it's to um, go to someone who is in a family that's not saved and witness to them, invite them to church. You know, there's so many roles that a good shepherd, a good pastor um, will feel when they're doing their job. Um, and be, they're doing it because they love their sheep. And that's, that's the kind of love only God can give a good shepherd. He's got to be called to do that. So it says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. A good shepherd should know his sheep. A good pastor should know his people. I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. That's what a good shepherd will do. He'll put other things aside to, to take care of the needs of the church and his family. He will, he will take care of those things because that's what good shepherds do. And they put God first. That's the key. They put God first in all that they do. Verse 16, he says, And the other sheep which I have are not in the fold, they also I must bring, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. So Jesus is saying, you know, I'm, I'm gathering them in. And that's our job as sheep to go out and bring more sheep in to the good shepherd so that more can be one. He says, Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Jesus didn't, he wasn't forced to lay his life down. He willingly laid it down so that he could take it up again, so that he could rise again on that third day and, and deliver us from sickness, disease, sin, everything, death. He delivered it all. He delivered us from it all. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down. I have the power to lay it down. Only Jesus did. And I have the power to take it up again. I have the power to take this. This is my command I have received from my Father. You know, so if we're if we're looking at the sheep door today, there are so many wonderful things to glean um, from this sheep door. We can see that Jesus was telling us that he is protecting us. He's resting in the doorway between us and the enemy. And he has the authority to do it. He had the authority to lay down his life, and he did. And then he took it back up again. Um, he, he did it for you. He did it for me today. So he's that good shepherd that willingly laid his life down, willingly died, willingly went to the cross by the only means that would, would make us free, that would make us saved, that would make us live forever. Jesus is the only door that you're going to go in that's going to complete you in every single way. You know, I've walked through some doors in my life, and, and they didn't bring me anything but harm. But when I walked through the door of Jesus when I was eight years old, I never regretted one day of it. When I got saved, I'll never forget that moment. I'll never forget the feeling I felt inside, that clean feeling. And I still feel it today, that peace, and I can still feel it today. All these years later, God is faithful. He is good to us. He is the way. He draws near to those who draw near to him. If you're not feeling him, it's not because he moved. It's because you did. Move closer to the Lord today. He wants to be close to you. He wants to be so close. Just like the shepherd was with the sheep laying right there in the doorway, touching right up against him. You know, I'm sure the shepherd didn't smell too good because the sheep were all up close to him and near him. But yet, he didn't mind that. He didn't mind it because those were his sheep and they knew him by name. And I, I thank God for that. I, I thank God that, that I know Jesus today. I thank God that he knows me. He knows who I am. He knows right where I'm at today. And he knows right where you are today. And I thank God that he was willing to lay in the gap, to lay down his life so that I could have life and have it more abundantly, as he said through here. So remember, he's the door. He's the sheep door. There's no other way in. Um, if you go any other way, you're, you're coming as a thief and a robber, he says. But we've got the promise today of good pasture. We've got the promise of good things to come if we hold on to Jesus Christ and we don't give up and we don't quit and we don't give in, but we continue keeping our eyes focused on Jesus, knowing that he's made a way. Salvation, we know he's made the way. We talked about Noah's Ark um, this week, talked about the door, shut the door. God has to shut some doors. 
But when he shuts the door, he opens one as well. And we're believing for that. We're believing for him to do that. We've talked about um, Moses and the, the Passover door. And how God God made a way to heal all our sickness, all our disease. Became our Passover lamb. We talked about yesterday, the beautiful temple doors. And how we're to, to praise God and worship Him and thank Him for, for the way that He's made. That He's made a way for us to go to the Father. That we don't have to sacrifice anything else except our heart. That's all we got to do is rend our heart toward the Lord. Turn our eyes toward Jesus. And He is faithful and just to be there to save us and so this is not our final door we've got about two more so uh, stay tuned on Monday we'll be back with the tomb door which is an exciting door you don't want to miss if this has helped you today please like please share and subscribe and just follow along with us on our journey we love you we're praying for you you pray for us we'll see you soon